This smartphone app tells me the location of all of the drones that are flying around me right now. And even worse, it tells the location of the pilot literally exactly the GPS coordinates where the pilot is standing. And according to the FAA, everybody is supposed to be broadcasting this information for any Karen with a smartphone to pick up. <laughs> but there's something devious going on here. You see, right now, there are 12 drones around. And if I pull up this list, look at all these drones that are flying around me. Oh my goodness. And what Karen doesn't know is that all of those drones are fake. This little device here is spoofing remote ID information for drones that don't exist. And if you think that's useful or interesting or fun, you are gonna watch, watch this video. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. The first thing you gotta do is get one of these little devices. This is an ESP8266 Node MCU. I don't 100% know what that is, but I went to Amazon and I searched for it and I found one and I bought them. I'll put a link down below to the Amazon listing, but they're all over the internet. Buy one wherever you like. The next thing you gotta do is download and install the Arduino IDE on your machine. I actually already have this installed because I've used it for other projects. If you've never done that, you'll go to the download page, download and install it. Next, we're gonna go to this GitHub repo. Again, link in the video description below. I'll tell you what let's do. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's code, download zip. We'll just download the whole project. And here in my downloads folder, here is the zip file, and I'm just going to extract it to a folder. And then uh, here it is, here's that folder. And if we go in there, here's the entire contents of the, of the project. After you've downloaded and extracted that zip file, we're gonna start up the Arduino IDE and we're gonna click File Preferences. And what I want you to look for is this sketchbook location. See, colon backslash users, whatever, whatever, whatever. We're gonna copy that. I'm gonna open up my Explorer window and I'm going to go, I'm just gonna paste in that folder. I'm gonna to go to that folder. This is my Arduino sketch of folder, and it's where all the Arduino programs go. I'm then gonna open a second window. I'm gonna to go to my downloads folder, and I'm gonna find that remote ID spoofer master folder, and I'm just going to move that into my Arduino sketch folder. Then I will go into that folder, I will go into the remote ID spoofer. I will find the file remoteidspoofer.ino and I will double click that to open it. Next, we're gonna click File, Preferences, and go here to where we see additional board manager URLs. And according to the instructions on GitHub, we will add this URL. Copy link address, we're gonna paste that right here. Next, we'll click Tools, Board, Boards Manager and we will search for dauthor. Good, okay, great, it's there. <laughs> this is going very smoothly so far. We will install the dauthor ESP8266 boards. Next, we need to tell the Arduino what board type we have. We're gonna do that by plugging in the Node MCU. And when we do that, a new COM port should appear here. If that new COM port doesn't appear, you may need to install the CP210 driver uh, that's necessary to let the Arduino talk to this. You can just do a web search for CP210 driver. Oh, what the hell, I'll put it in the video description. So COM4 is the port that appeared when I plugged in my Node MCU. I'm gonna select that, and we need to tell it what board type it is. And if I just start typing Node MCU, I can see two examples. Node MCU, dauthor, ESP8266 board. That sounds right, and it's similar to what it said in the GitHub, so we're just gonna try that one and see if it works. After that, we are going to click the Upload button, and the sketch should compile and upload. It is picking them up, but unfortunately, it's picking them up as being 6,000 kilometers away. Huh, I, I think what's happening here is that the default GPS coordinates for that the device uses for the drones to randomly fly around are somewhere else than where I am. I guess ideally there would need to be a way for it to know your current GPS coordinates and then make fake drones fly around those coordinates. Let's see if we can figure out how to put in custom GPS coordinates and make them fly around my house. Aha, aha, define location, I found it, I found it. It is in, 
where, where the hell am I? It's in spoofer.cpp and 52, 24, 24. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go into Google Maps and you're gonna find a location, like for example, the Rotorite office. We're gonna right click and we're gonna get the GPS coordinates right here, 28.46054, 81.29414. Put that right here. Then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put slash slash here to comment out this line so I can put it back if I screw it up. I'm gonna copy that line and put it in here. And my base latitude, I think what the way I'm gonna do this is to just put this number in as he delivered here. I don't think I need degrees, minutes, and seconds. And then base longitude, again, we will comment out this line by putting two slashes before it, and we will copy that line, delete all these this stuff before the semicolon, and we will put in the longitude. Sure. Okay, now, We'll save that. We will once again upload the sketch. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> Here we've got an unknown UAS and here's the operator ID and the operator location. If I tap on it, it's right pretty close to here's there it is. There's Hazeltine National Drive. That's the Rotorite headquarters. And here is a completely non-existent fake drone broadcasting remote ID that doesn't really exist. And here are a whole bunch more of fake drones that don't really exist. And now there are some limitations of this device. For example, the range is not gonna be that good. It's using a little PCB based antenna. You can kind of see it right there. And it's just not gonna have a ton of range. The actual range will depend on many factors, but it's probably gonna be significantly less than the range of wherever you're flying. Which means that if someone was to see you flying up in the air, pull out their phone and look for uh, remote ID information, unless they were already standing relatively close to you, they might not see these fake things being broadcast. That could certainly be expanded upon, like in theory, one could add an external antenna to a device like this. In theory, one could do a lot of things, but that would require modifications that are beyond the reach of many people. The other improvement that this really needs is it really needs the ability to solder up to a GPS unit. And when the GPS unit picks up uh, your current location, then it should automatically make drones fly around your current location instead of making the drones fly around a hard-coded location uh, that you have to know beforehand and program in. <laughs> <laughs> I even found instructions for soldering an external antenna to one of these boards. Uh, I'll put a link to this down below. I'm clearly not the first person to have this idea. It's definitely not for the faint of heart, but may be doable if you're interested in that sort of thing. This is pretty cool and shows a lot of potential, and I'm not even sure this is illegal. I know that spoofing fake ADSB information is illegal. I mean, surely it must be illegal to spoof fake ADSB information. That involves general aviation, manned aircraft, and it pro I mean, there's got to be some way in which they've made that illegal. I'm not sure what the legal structure would be for doing for making this illegal. Nevertheless, I am not a lawyer, and if the FAA gets pissed off enough at you for doing this, they will find a way to make it, uh, to get you in trouble. Whether that's civil infractions or criminal charges, I don't know. So this is, for all official purposes, just a learning experience, and I am not in any way encouraging you to do anything with it in real life. That's on you. If you've watched this video this far, it's because you're concerned about remote ID and what it means for our future. Stuff like this is fun to think about, but probably isn't the actual final answer. If you wanna know more about what I think the actual answer is to what we can do about remote ID, I've got a video I made with a little bit more of a serious take, and I'll put a card on screen uh, so you can check it out. I'll see you there.